Well, wel welcome everyone to the College of Arts and Communication 2017 Scholarship Awards and Recognition Celebration. The college hosts two significant symbolic events each year. The college convocation at the beginning of fall term and this scholarship and recognition ceremony in the spring. These two events frame the year and symbolize and celebrate the values we embody in the college as well as what we've accomplished in the classroom, in the studios, and beyond. Our theme this year is Traditions of the New and considers how we as a college recognize our traditions and look to create new ones. It was not too long ago when we celebrated the beginning of the academic year at the college convocation. And now here, here we are within about a week of spring commencement. It's evident from today's awards that over the past months, you have achieved many of the goals you've set for yourselves. As the academic year draws to a close, it's time to look back and recognize what we've accomplished and the traditions that underwrite it. Congratulations, award winners. Considering the number of truly fine students across the disciplines of arts and communication, it's an honor to be designated as an award recipient. The pursuit of artistic or scholarly excellence, coupled with a consistently, consistently high level of academic performance, have been recognized by the faculty and staff as truly deserving of these awards. We're proud of your achievements. Let these awards be a reminder of your accomplishments and of the generous donors who support these scholarships that they may change the lives that they touch. We're going to begin our celebration today with a performance by the UW Whitewater Flute Ensemble. The UW Whitewater Flute Ensemble is a growing ensemble of undergraduate music education, performance, and theory composition majors and minors in the UW Whitewater Flute Studio. Active performers in the community, the group was invited to present a featured performance at the 2017 Wisconsin Flute Festival in Madison and the 2017 UWW Flute Day. To introduce the ensemble and their distinctive arrangement, please welcome director Christina Ballatori and the UWW Flute Ensemble. Today's performance, we will, the UW Whitewater Flute Ensemble will be performing Ian Clark's Walk Like This for Flute Quartet. Ian Clark is a British flutist and composer. This piece was originally written for four C flutes, and as you listen, you're going to hear the flute as you're maybe not used to hearing it. The performers today will be singing and playing, bending pitches, there'll be some percussive tonguing, all while they play as a group. So without further ado, let's welcome the UW Whitewater Flute Ensemble. Yeah. 
Honored to have with us today UW Whitewater Dean of Students Artanya Wesley. Originally from Milwaukee, Artanya earned her bachelor's degree in psychology and her master's degree in education from UW Platteville and completed her doctorate in educational psychology from Capella University in Minneapolis. She served in the Residence Life Department and as Student Services Coordinator in the Student Affairs Division at UW Platteville and as Dean of Students at UW Platteville prior to her arrival on campus here this past summer. She's also served as Senior Academic Planner for Student Affairs at UW System, where she provided guidance for the 14 UW System Vice Chancellors of Student Affairs, and as a recipient of the UW System Outstanding Women of Color in Education Award. Artania brings a tremendous breadth of experience and energy to campus, is highly student-centered, and is a passionate advocate for student success. Please welcome our Dean of Students, Artania Wesley. Tradition. An inherited, established, or customary pattern of thought, action, or behavior transmitted from generation to generation. Sounds simple, right? The complexity of tradition is that it is a living thing that grows, evolves, and changes over time in a very unpredictable manner. So where does that leave us? It leaves us in the balance between the custom of tradition and the complexity of tradition. We are constantly in the pursuit of a measure of greatness that allows us to make significant enough contribution that we create and establish new traditions. The faculty, staff, and students of the College of Arts and Communication embark upon this pursuit by embodying the core values of creativity, expression, inquiry, and integrity. These core values drive tradition while informing thought and shaping direction through collaboration, experimentation, and creative process. This evening, we are honored to have the departments of art design, theater dance, communication, music, and media arts and game development represented throughout the program. Students, faculty, scholarship donors, alumni, faculty award recipients, parents and guests, we are delighted to have you join us for the annual College of Arts and Communication Scholarship Awards and Recognition Celebration. This event is symbolic of not only the college's core values, but also the hard work and dedication of the faculty and students. We welcome you and we thank you for coming. It is now my pleasure to introduce Jane Ferenz, who will recognize the Faculty Excellence nominees and recipients. Thank you. Good afternoon. 
afternoon. I'm pleased to uh, announce the names of faculty and staff of excellence awards for this year. And I'd ask those of you who are nominees or recipients, when I call your name, please stand and remain standing. And audience, I'd ask you to hold your applause until everybody's been introduced, please. For teaching, this year's nominees are Glenn Hayes from Music, Angela Iannone from Theater Dance, Teresa Lind from Art and Design, and Sue Wildermuth from Department of Communication. And this year's recipient was Sue Wildermuth, who's unable to be with us this afternoon. Sue is also this year's recipient of the university's Roseman Award. For research, Tracy Lyons from Theater Dance, Bill Miller from Art and Design, Sherry Van Alstein from Music, and David Wachanga from Communication. And this year's recipient was Sherry Van Alstein. For service, the nominees are Michael Flanagan from Art and Design, Ed Frederick from Communication, and Barbara Grubel from Theater Dance backstage. <laughs> and this year's recipient was Ed Frederick. <laughs> Academic advising, the nominees are Jim Disrud from Communication and Dan Kim from Art and Design. And this year's winner is Dan Kim. So. And finally, I would also like to recognize um, another of our colleagues who was the recipient of a campus award. This is the Excellence Award for Instructional Academic Staff. And the winner for campus this year was William Lowell. Bill? From the from the Hi, I'm Barbara Grubel, and I'm here to um, uh, name the uh, award recipients for the College of Art and Communication College Scholarships. So recipients, as I stand, when you please call your name to be recognized and remain standing until we get through all of the awards, and then we'll give the applause. The James R. and Zoe Connor Arts and Communication Scholarship, Daniel Paras. The Dolly Family Scholarships, Mary Abbott, Stephanie Graff, Leah Motel, Rebecca Weber. The Fassel Leadership Scholarship, Kevin Hill. The Green Hill Excellence in the Arts Award, Sarah Augustine, Rachel Briggs, Allison Campbell, Jacob Fox, Juliet King, Emily Long, Richard A. Petarius III, Molly Schlecht, Nicholas Spaeth, and Rebecca Weber. The Francine L. Pease Arts and Communication Scholarship, Renee Ripplinger. College of Arts and Communication Promise Endowment, Mary Abbott, Eric Bauer, Bauer sorry, Karen Lorem, Crystal Wilhelm. The Raymond E. Light Memorial Scholarship, Shelley, Shelby Jacobs, Frederick Steele, Lauren Vanderlinden. The Outstanding Junior Scholarship, Alexa Zakatansky. The Performing Arts Trust Scholarship, John Michael, Benjamin Swanson. The John and Shirley Greenwood Scholarship, Alex Emery. The Julie Caldwell Award, Jennifer French. And for MAGD, the Max Mallory Scholarship, Renee Ripplinger. Audience, please give these fine
I'd now like to introduce Marshall Anderson, Chair of Theater Dance. Good afternoon. I'm Marshall Anderson, and I welcome you all here today. As before, will the recipients please stand when your name is called and remain standing, and will the audience hold your applause until we're done? First, we have incoming freshman theater scholarships, and these four students are in high school today, so they're not with us, but we have Nicholas Soule, Reagan Larson, Abigail Smith, and Matthew Rasmussen. Next, the Theater Alumni Awards go to Alexa Farrell and Grace Roosh. The Carolyn and John Bodensteiner Outstanding Theater Sophomore Scholarship goes to John Mickle. The Dance Choreography Award, Audrey Mice. The McNally Stage Management Award, Samantha Pekelnicki. The Fred Cedar Home Theater Writing Award, Stephanie Graff. The Margot and Scott Trenadu Scholarship, Kenneth Ryan. The Matthew Schliesman Scholarship for Artistic and Academic Accomplishment, Stephanie Graff. The Wynette Barnett Theater Scholarship in Performance, Ethan Wakefield. In Costuming, Shelby Jacobs. In Technical Theater, Jordan Meyer. In Dance, Audrey Mice. And as all-around student, Alex Carey. The Fannie E. Hicklin Theater Education Endowed Scholarship, Nathan Brogy. The Jean and Ann Wilson Endowed Theater Scholarship goes to Mason Ronan and Liliana Gonzalez. The Tom and Jane Colwyn Theater Dance Design Scholarship to Alex Carey. And lastly, the Sally Marks Endowed Scholarships, Ashley Brower, Shelby Jacobs, Emily Ottinger, and Samantha Pekelnicki. So please join me in congratulating these students. We have Dr. Michael Dugan from the music department. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you, Marshall. Uh, it is my distinct pleasure to announce all of the music scholarship recipients. Uh, recipients, when your name is called, please stand, turn around, smile, <laughs> remain standing, and then we'll ask for thunderous applause when we get to the end of the list. All right, let's get this started. First recipient for the Stephen Butler Music Endowment, Margaret Donovan, almost said Maggie. Bushman Pritchett Scholarship, Richard Petarius III. Chancellor's Quartet Scholarship, Sam Ewart, Jasmine Kozier, Noah Shafford, Alexis Zakutansky. The Robert Koppenbarger Woodwin Scholarship, Ryan Schultz. The Guerin Jazz Talent Endowed Scholarship, Artrell LaFleur, Richard Petarius III. James and Lita Fay Memorial Scholarship, Clara McGowan. Little side note here that's not in your program, Clara is also our 2017 nominee for the prestigious Garter Award. Lots of names here, the Gala Concert Scholarship, Kelly Barbeau, Angela Blakey, Taylor Bogle, Monica Burian, Margaret Donovan, Elliot Filipiak, Tony Gurner, Angela Jacoby, Austin Kappel, Morgan Kramer, Hannah Kramer, Jasmine Kozier, Artro LaFleur, Maya Peterson, Samantha Pritchard, Cheyenne Farr, Emily Roscoe, Amberly Ross, Elias Rust, Libby Ticino, Lauren Vanderlinden, and Cameron Vincent. The Joanne H. Hobbs Endowed Music Scholarship, Samantha Bellinger, the Howard G. Inglefield of Music Scholarship, Elias Rust. The Robert L. Jennings Voice Scholarship, Anna Kramer. The Carlene McMonagall Scholarship Endowment, Benjamin Swanson. Music Mosaic Scholarship, 
Adam Smith, David Baker, Dennis Rohr's Band Scholarship Endowment, Nathan Raleigh, the Dr. Robert K. Webb Family Scholarship, Libby Ticino, the Glenn and Christine Hayes Music Education Scholarship, Ryan Schultz, the Vander Linden Voice Scholarship, Morgan Kramer, and another one that's not in your program, uh, but is worth mentioning, the uh, McGraw Award. This is typically the uh, university's award for the, for the top student given and, and basically just created by the former Dean of the School of Graduate Studies, uh, Arthur McGraw, back in 1985 to honor outstanding student achievement. And the 2000 recipient of this award is our very own Justin Staker. Join me in congratulating the fine students. Communications, Kathy Brady. Hello. Communications scholarship winners, will you please stand and face your admiring audience? The Ben and Maxine Lowell Scholarship, Hannah Dawson. Communication Department Ambassadors, Patrick Gendron and Devin Dial. Communication Department Scholarship Endowment, Madeline Carroll. The Peter and Catherine Conover Endowed Scholarship, Crystal Wilhelm. George Hafer Scholarship Fund, Aaron Rossell. Richard and Kathy Haven Political Communication Scholarship, Jonathan Doolin. The Lowell Award for Excellence in Corporate and Health Communication, Colleen O'Donnell, the Martino Journalism Scholarship, Angelica Catlin, the Gunver Stews Excellence in Journalism Scholarship, Caitlin Fionda, and the Dr. Patricia A. Townsend Scholarship, Ann Zietlow. Will you help me congratulate our winners? Now my pleasure to introduce Greg Cook, Interim Art Department Chair. It is my distinct pleasure to introduce the scholarship recipients from the Department of Art and Design. And I think you've seen the routine, so recipients, you're to stand as your name is called, turn and face the audience, smile even larger, and uh, we'll hold our applause until the end of the list. So, the Amy Arnson Endowed Art Scholarship goes to Kristen Humphrey. The Elizabeth Blumberg Endowed Art Scholarship goes to Juliet King. The Roberta Avon Fiscum Memorial Scholarship goes to Jacob Fisher and Kristen Humphrey. The Flanagan McNeil Bonzinski Military Family Scholarship goes to Mary Abbott and Sarah Van Dam. The Fishman Flanagan Book Arts Scholarship goes to Jacob Fisher. The Edna Grinsteed Art Scholarship goes to Daniela Porras and Nathaniel Sherritt. The Mary Weiser Art Studies Scholarship goes to Sanja Trocki. The Mark Palmer Gray Jr. Endowed Art Scholarship goes to Mary Abbott, Jacob Fisher, Kristen Humphrey, Jessica Mallow, Daniela Porras, and Frederick Steele. The Stacia Lane Endowed Art Scholarship goes to Jessica Mallow, and finally, the Henry and Violet DeWind Scholarship goes to Libby Block Cross. So let's congratulate all these wonderful students.
And we welcome back to the podium, Kathy Brink. <laughs> It is my distinct pleasure to introduce Michael Becker as our keynote speaker today. Because Michael's speech is reflective of his life, I'm not going to tell you too much about him. Uh, what I will tell you, though, is that the communication department was in desperate need of an instructor in our advertising major, and what we were blessed with was Michael, an instructor who is passionate about his subject, has a great deal of career experience, and really cares about his students and has really energized our advertising program. Please help me in welcoming Michael to the podium. Thank you very much. Is this thing on? Okay, greetings. So I've prepared a speech for you guys today. Thank you, Dr. Brady, Dean Mertens, faculty, friends, parents, dignified guests, and of course, esteemed scholarship award winners. I've been asked today to talk to you about tradition and the importance it has for our undergraduate students here at UW-Whitewater. In preparing for this speech, I spent a fair amount of time thinking about the best way to deliver a roughly 15-minute speech about tradition without putting you all to sleep. Uh, finally, after a bit of hand-wringing, I decided to break my speech up into three general segments, each with its own unique perspective on tradition. Each section represents unique times in my life, versions of me, as it were, when tradition played an important part in my life. The three versions of me are my 11-year-old self, my 29-year-old self, and my 50-year-old self. Thank you. <laughs> like most of you, my earliest memories of tradition centered around my family and the collection of time-honored customs that we have all accepted, in essence, because that's how it's always been done. The dictionary defines tradition as, quote, the transmission of customs or beliefs from generation to generation. As an example here, uh, as a few uh, of a few traditions that I myself currently have experienced, birthdays, holidays, graduations, recently my, my daughter's confirmation, um, a few others more recently, binge watching Glee, I don't know if you guys have ever done that before. Um, lots and lots of funerals, unfortunately, recently, but traditions have kind of marked my life. While traditions definitely serve as an important anchor in our lives, I submit to you that a tradition lacks true impact and depth of meaning without the personal touch and hands-on caring of those entrusted with upholding those customs and beliefs. Personal touch is defined as, quote, an original or special quality, something that is done for every single person in a group in order to make them feel special. In my mind, personal touch is the magic ingredient that can transform a loose set of customs or beliefs into the meaningful traditions that make a group feel truly valued and connected. Uh, quickly, by show of hands, how many of you would say you are passionate about sports, professional sports? Um, favorite team, anything like that, sports. Okay, so a good chunk, probably about 70% is my guess. Okay, so I love sports as well, and my first example I want to share with you is uh, from my 11-year-old self. Like most of you, I love sports, but I have especially been a passionate fan of football. Uh, over my whole life, and watching football with my family is a tradition that I have enjoyed since my earliest memory. When I was 11 years old, my dad got a new job, and our family ended up moving rather abruptly from Minneapolis, Minnesota, where, by the way, all my friends were, uh, to Green Bay, Wisconsin. Yeah, right, right. Now, I could stop there, but... Um, okay, so Green Bay, a town steeped in tradition, a town that features the only football team in the NFL to ever be owned by its citizens a town where everyone, whether they are at Walmart or at a wedding, proudly wears their Packer apparel. <laughs> Nicknamed Title Town, there are few of any cities that are more traditional or more defined by their traditions than Green Bay. For my family, Green Bay was enemy territory. <laughs> so when we first moved to Title Town from Minneapolis, the Vikings were part of our family tradition. And our allegiance quickly went on full display when we moved to Green Bay's budding west side. Much like an enemy outpost, we defiantly hung our Minnesota Viking flag on the ramparts of our new home and made ready for battle. My brother and I manned the, the garrisons, faithfully wearing our Viking pajamas, like conscripts in the Viking army. 
If a neighbor dropped by for coffee, my mom forced them to drink from one of our matching Viking coffee cups. <laughs> Whenever the Vikings came to Green Bay for a game, those same neighbors would attack our house with toilet paper in the dead of night. Needless to say, it was a tumultuous time in my life. Then, one day, in the spring of 1977, something life-changing happened to me. At the tender age of 11, and much to the chagrin of my parents, I became a Packer fan. How, you may ask? Well, that's, that was the day when Packer rookie quarterback David Whitehurst, you probably don't know who he is, but he's a quarterback from long ago, rode my bike, banana seed and all, to the team's spring practice session. For those of you who don't, are, are not familiar with this tradition, this seemingly benign act is actually an example of a long-standing annual tradition in Green Bay, one in which Packer players ride kids' bikes down Dream Drive en route to the team's spring practice. It's an event that began with Vince Lombardi and is an excellent tradition that continues to this day. It is, in my opinion, a, a prime example of an organization demonstrating personal touch. It's the underlying reason why today you never find an empty seat at a Packer home game and perhaps more importantly, why you can find a Packer bar in virtually any city in the world. It's also why, win, lose, or draw, people who love the Packers will always love the Packers, and why, I'm sorry, Dallas fans, raise your hand, Dallas fans. Sorry. <laughs> they are known as America's team, am I right? Yeah, okay, thank you. <laughs> While the many Super Bowl victories and conference titles the Packers have amassed is, are certainly a fantastic legacy, I believe, that is, the personal touches they make with their fans, like the Packer bike ride, or, or the fact that many fans own stock in the company and have actual say at stakeholder meetings that set the Packer organization apart from other teams. This feeling of personal investment that the team has created with its fans represents something greater than the mere tradition of winning. Ultimately, that, that bike, the bike ride proved to be too much for my Viking uh, allegiance. In that moment, it was the personal touch hand-delivered by David Whitehurst that sparked a lifelong change in me and marked the beginning of a love affair with the Packers that has lasted to this day. I know what some of you are thinking, sure, sure Mike, a football analogy, that's nice, but isn't it a bit cliched? I, I tend to agree. Uh, in my defense, I'll also, I'll also say this, I did attend Vincent T. Lombardi Junior High School when I was around that same age, so <laughs> I have some excuses. Um, it's this whole football is life thing is not easy habit to break, I can tell you that. Um, while some people try to convince you that football is life, I believe the twists and turns of our professional lives are often more complex than the X's and O's found on the gridiron. Nonetheless, when we are faced with the major transition challenges in our lives, tradition is often the antidote that's, that offers us direction, comfort, and meaning. Whether you're fresh out of high school, or you're like my 29-year-old self, who at the time was looking to transition from the workforce back into academia, the notion of a personal touch becomes vitally important component to success. Big, sweeping changes were fast approaching for my 29-year-old self. To put this into quick context, I had already received my undergraduate degree from some seven years prior from UW-Madison, and while Madison certainly is a fantastic university with many great traditions, it was perhaps the overwhelming size that made it difficult for me to really get to know my professors, or even my TAs for that matter. At any rate, I did learn a lot about myself while attending UW-Madison. I learned how to write pretty well. Uh, I learned eventually that I was not probably going to be the next Martin Scorsese. I also, uh, for some strange reason, got really good at shooting pool. For the life of me, I don't know how that could have happened, but uh, maybe good genes, I don't know. Anyway, after graduation, I spent the next two years traveling around and finding myself. I lived in England for two years and traveled extensively during this time. Needless to say, my parents weren't overly thrilled with some of the decisions that my 20-something self made. Back then, ultimately, after some serious soul searching, I decided to go back to school to pursue my advanced degree in communication. And by the way, it's communication, not communications. Just wanted to say that. Thank you. Uh, this time around, however, thanks to, in part to my experience in Madison, I knew what I wanted in school. I was looking for a more personal and personalized college experience. I was looking for an institution with a proven track record of helping people achieve their professional goals. People like me, who are not considered traditional students anymore. I was looking for a school that offered me a practical, career-focused education with teaching professionals that instinctively knew how to find, help me find and unleash the confident professional person hiding inside me. After some searching, I finally settled on UW-Whitewater. 
As a graduate student in the communication department, I was fortunate to receive a graduate assistantship position, which exposed me to Whitewater's unique organic approach to teaching with his students. I witnessed firsthand and quickly grew to appreciate the sense of community, the respect for diversity, and the unflagging commitment to serve that my professors embody. My experience at UW-Whitewater during this time was truly transformative. I will never forget the day I graduated because it was also the day I got my first real job in marketing long ago. The values I learned at UW-Whitewater have stuck with me ever since. Inspired by the personal attention and hands-on caring exemplified by my, parent, my, my professors and my parents, um, my graduate experience gave me a blueprint for what teaching su success looks like and is an approach that I have emulated in my own teaching practice. Like my passion for the Packers, the, pra the, the practice of personal touch has made me a diehard UW-Whitewater fan ever since. Okay, now for the last chapter in this saga. Again, to provide some context, my 50-year-old self has now spent the last 20 years working in progressive marketing roles, culminating uh, as a, in a role as a chief marketing officer for a business incubator. I live in Heartland, Wisconsin, and I'm married with two kids. I have a nice home and a dog called Declan, who's awesome, by the way. Uh, recently, it, it just this sort of weird thing that happened to me, I just want to share this with you. Recently, my 50-year-old self received his ARP card uh, in the mail, which triggered a spiral effect of anxiety, disbelief, and denial, causing me to question the very meaning of my existence. Um, for those of you who don't know what ARP stands for, it's the Association for the Advancement of Retired People. I'm, not, I'm far from retirement, just so you know, um, but that was a, it was a shock to my system when, I, when that card came in. Despite the vagaries of aging, I feel truly blessed. Professionally, I've had the great future, the fortune of working with some progressive companies and brands, and I've met many, many great people throughout my, my long journey. One thing I learned during this course of my business career is that innovation is vitally important for any organization, um, especially with those that are competing in the business world. In fact, many of the companies I have worked for have focused their resources on building a culture of innovation. Some say they do it, some uh, put it on a piece of paper and don't actually do it, but either way, innovation is a buzzword in the business world, and it's for good reason. However, under the strictest de definition of tradition, we've been talking about that, tradition seems to be designed to squelch true innovation. In a sense, tradition, which is considered first and foremost as a conservative force in our society, acts as a safeguard against dangerous liking for novelty or even against any suggestion of a wider outlook. So as a, as a marketing person, I kind of rail against that sort of notion of tradition. I submit to you that all organizations that wish to say, or stay competitive and, and, and must, they must cultivate a, and embrace a tradition that encourages innovation. They must embrace, as we've been hearing tonight, a tradition of the new. As a new instructor here at UW-Water, I'm glad to report to you that my 50-year-old self has encountered a college system here that is embracing this concept in numerous and meaningful ways. So what are the new traditions that an undergraduate student might encounter here at UW-Whitewater? Well, when it comes to athletics, the Warhawks are clearly of championship caliber. UW-Whitewater is home to some of the most competitive teams and athletes in the nation, thanks in large part to, the, to our stellar facilities. We also have the largest business school in the state. We graduate more teachers than any other college in Wisconsin, and UW-Whitewater has the only student-run sta radio station in the state. Whitewater also has more than 160 campus organizations available to meet the needs and interests of our diverse student body. In the spirit of innovation, I love this, UW-Hive, you guys have heard of that before, Hive? Okay, so you, you should know about this. Hive is an exciting new venture grant program funded by the UW-Whitewater Foundation to give students the opportunity to pursue ventures and projects. Students from all majors and backgrounds are encouraged to apply and become valuable members of the UW-Hive the Hive community. The goal of this venture grant program is to create a network where students work together under guidance from faculty and industry mentors to pursue ideas and projects that inspire their passion. So there's actually funding for this. So if you got a good idea, I mean, that's something you should pursue definitely here at this university. It's, it's really right at the heart of, of innovation. I've also been pleased and proud, it's a little bit of a plug here, as a new instructor to uh, in the communication department to take part in this tradition uh, by being the advisor for WA. Anybody know what WA stands for? Thank you. <laughs> yeah, so Whitewater Advertising Association, which is open to anyone interested in learning more about advertising, wink, wink. Come see me after. Um, to sum it all up, there, are, there is truly something for everyone here at this university. You are only limited by your imagination and desire to achieve. 
Underlying all of these opportunities available to students here at UW-Whitewater is a tradition that can't be displayed in a trophy case. And yet, from my experience, is part of the bedrock of this institution. It can be witnessed in the meaningful personal interactions that occur each and every day between students and faculty. Connections that, are, that for decades have served to foster an effective balance between academic theory and actual hands-on practice that benefit both student and instructor. It is the makeup of quali and quality of these relationships that gives us confidence through the good times and bad and enables us to evolve and grow. With a 98% postgraduate placement rate in which 85% of us find gainful employment and 13% of us, percent of us find, uh, seek advanced degrees, it's easy to see why anyone who applies themselves at this university will enjoy positive results. Our traditions have served to create a culture that is rooted in opportunity, caring, and academic excellence and has helped create brighter futures for students of all interests and from all walks of life. As an alumni and proud member of the instructional staff here at the Communication Department, it is my great pleasure to acknowledge and congratulate each of you on your fine achievements this year. You get it. You have made a, the most of your opportunities. You have put in the hard work to achieve your goals and you have excelled in your pursuits. I encourage each of you to reflect for a moment on your accomplishments and the people who, through personal touch, have helped you achieve your goals in some way. Finally, I would simply suggest that you pay it forward. We've all heard that before, right? Pay it forward. You are the next chapter in this organization's great history. I encourage each of you to be approachable and helpful with anyone you encounter here or anywhere in your travels may take you. Imagine what life would be like if we all paid it forward at the same time. The mind boggles at that prospect. As a final thought, I would like to leave you with this quote from American author and professor, professor John Shedd, who said, quote, a ship in the harbor is safe, but that is not what ships are built for. Remember, luck favors the prepared and fortune favors the bold. I encourage each of you to build on tonight's success and to not leave your ships in the harbor. Don't be afraid to take some risks in this life. As members of this great institution, you are the newest standard bearers of our most excellent traditions. Let this moment be the catalyst for many more great future moments to come. Thank you and have a wonderful evening. Thank you, Michael. It's now my pleasure to present the College Value Award recipients for the 2017-2018 academic year. The College Value Award celebrates and affirms the college common values of creativity, expression, inquiry, and integrity that connect communication and the fine arts and embody the mission and goals of the college and how these values shape our academic and personal lives and what we have in common across the disciplines. Each of the following students was nominated by the faculty of their major department as demonstrating and embodying the college value they were chosen to represent. Each year the college invites those individuals to share their thoughts and perspectives on those values at the fall term college convocation and presents them with this award in recognition of their exemplary activities. Students, uh, please rise as I um, uh, call your name, uh, representing the Art and Design Department and receiving the College Value Award for Inquiry, Libby Perdania. Representing the Communication Department and receiving the College Value Award for Expression, Star Lee. Representing the Music Department and receiving the College Value Award for Creativity, Alexa Zakutansky. And representing the Theater Dance Department and receiving the College Value Award for Integrity, Alexander Carey. Please join me in congratulating these deserving students. In keeping with another tradition, I'd like to take the opportunity to recognize several individuals in the college that embody the idea of servant leadership. 
that being a leader who's a servant first. This is a manner of engagement that begins with a commitment to serve, that brings one to aspire to lead and manifests in the inherent care taken by that leader to prioritize the needs of those being served. I want to recognize and thank several individuals that have stepped forward to advance the college on all levels from curriculum to facilities to its cultural climate and made a true difference in the lives of both faculty and students. I'd like to introduce again Interim Associate Dean Jane Ferenz and Interim Associate Dean Barbara Grubel. And I want to thank Interim Associate Dean Jane Friends for her thoughtful oversight and advancement of the curriculum in the college, student advising across the board, and all registration and enrollment across the entire college. And Interim Associate Dean Barbara Grubel for her methodical oversight and coordination of these very scholarships that we're awarding today, the breadth of college facilities and technology development and the advancement of a safe and stimulating learning environment. I'd like to also recognize two other leadership individuals who could not be here today. World of the Arts Coordinator and College Degree Examiner Mike Olson, whose diligent oversight of student degree plans and coordination with the Registrar's Office make it possible for individual students to graduate efficiently and on time. And Susan Wildermuth, for her contributions leading the College Inclusive Excellence Committee and her exhaustive efforts in developing the next diversity forum that have contributed to a positive campus climate. Please join me again in thanking our college leadership team. As a way to commemorate today's event and to say thank you to our scholarship donors for your generous support, our students would now like to present you with a gift that has become its own kind of tradition. At this time, we would ask all of our scholarship donors to please stand as you are able so that our students may thank you with a small token of our appreciation. Scholarship donors, if you're able to stand, please, please do. Please accept from our students these commemorative cards created just for this occasion that capture the beauty of our campus in and around the college. We hope you enjoy the campus scenes and that they serve as a reminder of our gratitude for your generosity. Thank you again. And finally, our final speaker, who will provide the closing remarks for this event, has a distinguished record of service and knowledgeable perspective that spans the campus in his role as Associate Provost of the University that he has generously contributed to the college as the Interim Chair of Art and Design. Please again welcome Associate Provost and Interim Department Chair Greg Cook.
It's my honor to be invited here to say a few uh, closing words for this uh, wonderful reception. Uh, I want to first thank Sarah Altermott and her colleagues on the planning committee for organizing this event. Uh, a lot of work goes in behind the scenes to put all this together. And uh, I believe Sarah's backstage, but uh, Sarah, would you come on out and, s and stand out on the stage with me here for just a moment? And as you come out, I'm going to also uh, introduce or, or at least uh, list the names of those on the planning committee. And if you're here on the planning committee, if you'll stand, and if you're behind the scenes there, behind the curtains, you can come out and join Sarah. So Marshall Anderson, George Ferenz, Jane Ferenz, Michael Flanagan, Barbara Grubel, Daniel Kim, Katie Kuznacek, Leslie Lemuro, Ann Mansell, James Mead, Robert Mertens, Michael Morrissey, Kirsten Mortimer, Hans Pregler, and Linda Robinson. That's a big team to put all this together. Let's give them our gratitude. We also express appreciation for our welcome speaker, the Dean of Students, Artania Wesley, and to our keynote speaker, Michael Betker. That was a great story, Michael, and uh, I think Michael would make a great commencement speaker. What, what do you think? <laughs> See? Congratulations to all the scholarship and award winners recognized here today. It's really inspiring to think about all your amazing work and achievements and also to think about the great work that you'll achieve and the creativity that you'll contribute to society after you graduate. And also thank you to the friends and family who are here to celebrate with these students. I know that the students greatly appreciate all that you've done for them over the years and all the support that you'll continue to provide. Um, and as, uh, as Dean Mertens expressed also, uh, we give a special thanks to the donors who are able to be here today and also to the donors uh, who, are, who are not able to attend. We all greatly appreciate your generous support of the university. Your support for these students makes a tremendous difference. We have many students here at UW-Whitewater all across campus who are so capable of doing great work but some of them wouldn't be able to attend college or finish their degrees without your generous contributions. So you make a big difference and we thank you very much. So one more round of applause for all of our friends. I just wanted to say a few sentences to echo the theme of this year's event, the traditions of the new. As I think about the concepts of tradition and new, it reminds me of the important role that the arts play in both documenting human cultural history and also propelling human culture forever forward. Because on the one hand, we rely on the arts to document contemporary concepts in human experience and expression and also to serve as an archive of the past. This function is served when we look back at art from prior generations to understand human cultural history, in the visual arts and theater, in music compositions, and in other modes of media and communication. On the other hand, we also rely on the arts in all of its wonderful forms to help us break loose from history. The arts are creative in suggesting new forms, new patterns, new expressions, new ways of thinking about the world and expressing the human condition. In this function, art is thought-provoking. Sometimes it's even jarring or shocking, but it leads the way to the new. So art represents both the tradition of the past and also the path to the new, echoing tonight's theme, tradition of the new. Now speaking of tradition, we have a tradition of giving special thanks to important people who provide great leadership and guidance for us all. And so I'd like to take this opportunity while I have the podium to deviate from the regular program to do that. 
So you're not going to see this in your program because we're making this up right here on the spot. There is a special person here among us. I'll give you a hint. He stepped up to serve as interim dean of the college these past two years. That should be a pretty good hint. <laughs> but well before that, he served as associate dean, department chair, and faculty colleague. Throughout all of his roles, he's exemplified dedication and professionalism and is a role model for so many. So before I ask him to step out on the stage, I have a few quotes that I gathered from colleagues uh, here, and so I'm gonna call this next segment, A Nod to Bob. <laughs> a Nod to Bob. Bob cares deeply about the college and is the keeper of our institutional knowledge. I appreciate his generous sharing sense of humor and his patience with someone who's learning the ropes. I couldn't do what I do without Bob's help and guidance. That was one quote. Another, Bob is a walking encyclopedia set. <laughs> Numerous times I felt that I was ripping pages out of the set as he mentored me in my responsibilities. Once I mentioned this to him and he respectfully replied, perhaps you could just take the volume and copy the page. <laughs> Ripping them out makes me scared. <laughs> Thank you for your depth of knowledge, Bob, your relentless mentorship and service to the College of Arts and Communication. Thank you for all of your guidance and support as well as all of your hard work for the college especially over these past two years. Bob has been a calm force in the administrative storm here in the center of the arts. We have appreciated his willingness to methodically work through concerns and wish him all the best. Now don't get us wrong, Bob's not going anywhere. We're just sending, giving our appreciation here today. Bob's deep knowledge of UW-Whitewater, its policies and procedures is only outweighed by his kindness, compassion, and understanding. Bob is truly a great leader. So with those is just a sampling of some of the commentary that's shared all across the college and all across the campus. Would all of you please join me in giving our heartfelt appreciation to our interim dean of the College of Arts and Communication, Robert Emergence. Bob. appreciation here that have been signed by people around the building and uh, maybe you take a moment to say a few words of course. I was just saying to Greg, I guess the next time I have to proof the script closer. <laughs> well, um, it's, I'm, I'm most touched by um, the, uh, you know, the, the expressions from the people that I work with. I, I work with an uh, a incredible group of professionals who uh, really goes so far beyond what's required by them and, and their commitment is just you know, amazing on a daily basis and, and they're always there and, and they really deserve all the credit for making the college function. This college has a lot of moving parts to it and I keep trying to you know, share that with everyone. You know, between our, um, um, our young auditorium that we're in, our uh, 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 academic operation, our factory operation with our foundry, our performance operation uh, throughout the uh, theater, dance, and music department. There are, you know, and most people probably don't know that there are probably 300 events that go on in the center of the arts and another 50 to 100 events going on here each year. 
that's besides the classes and the lectures and everything else. So there are so many moving parts. Um, it, is, it is a phenomenal group of people to work with. They make it happen and they go way beyond anything that can be expected of them to make sure that our students are the center of, of what goes on in the college. But I want to thank everyone for your kind thoughts and for this uh, very nice gift. Thank you very much. As we close here, I just want to make two important announcements. Uh, first, everyone, everyone here in the room is invited to the reception in the atrium of the Green Hill Center of the Arts immediately following this event. So it's just down the hallway and go to the atrium. And then the second announcement is that we ask that the donors, the scholarship donors, and also the scholarship recipients, the students, please stop in the Crosman Gallery during the reception to have your photos taken, okay? All right, thank you for being here uh, this afternoon, and that closes the event. Thank you.